the third video on clotting. In this video we're going to talk about how your body limits coagulation, how it breaks down blood clots and also how we can use drugs to manipulate the coagulation system. The most important elements here are the tissue factor pathway inhibitor or TFPI, antithrombin and proteins C and S. So this is a picture of the traditional model of coagulation, the extrinsic and intrinsic systems. Tissue factor pathway inhibitor limits the initial burst of thrombin produced through the extrinsic or tissue factor pathway. Antithrombin, sometimes called antithrombin 3, limits part of the amplification phase or the intrinsic pathway and common pathways. Finally, the complex of protein C and protein S inhibits all of the cofactors of coagulation. Fibrinolysis is a process of breaking down the fibrin mesh which has been created in the coagulation cascade. Tissue plasmin activator, which is released from endothelial cells, activates plasminogen to its active form, plasmin. Plasmin is a protease which breaks down the fibrin mesh. We can use artificial tissue plasminogen activator or TPA in medicine and it's usually used when we need to rapidly break down a clot, often in a stroke or in a large pulmonary embolus. Let's talk about anticoagulant drugs. First of all, heparin. How does it work? Heparin augments the action of antithrombin by about a million times. We can use it in a number of different forms. For example, unfractionated heparin is given as a continuous infusion in some circumstances, but the low molecular weight heparins are in much more common use these days, and they're just given as a subcutaneous injection. In the UK, almost all patients in hospitals are given some form of low molecular weight heparin, whether it's anoxaparin or doltaparin or something similar, and that's to prevent blood clots from forming in patients who are you know, ill and dehydrated and basically just sitting in bed all day long. There are other drugs as well, like Fondoparinux, which is a synthetic drug that just takes the active site of heparin and uses that instead, and that's used in things like acute myocardial infarction. Okay, next let's talk about warfarin. It's the most commonly prescribed anticoagulant and has a wide range of uses. Warfarin is an old drug and although it's really commonly prescribed still, it does have its problems and that is because the bioavailability of it is so different from one person to the next. It inhibits an enzyme which recycles vitamin K in a pathway that produces some of the coagulation factors, specifically 2, 7, 9 and 10. If you're a medical student, for some reason it always seems to crop up the question of which are the vitamin K dependent factors, you know, in other words, which are the ones that are affected by warfarin. Now I find the easiest way to remember that is actually by remembering the year 1972. It's just easier than remembering the, the individual numbers. So that's 1972, so it's 10, 9, 7 and 2. Warfarin inhibits an enzyme which recycles vitamin K. As such, it can be reversed by giving the patient vitamin K. If you need to reverse it very quickly, so for example, if a patient's having a significant bleed and they're on warfarin, you can just give them a load of the factors that they need, for example, in fresh frozen plasma, or you can use a, a combination of the factors in one of the preparations, for example, Octoplex. In the last few years, there have been more anticoagulant drugs that have become available. Dabigatran directly inhibits thrombin, while rivaroxaban inhibits activated factor 10. These are mostly used for atrial fibrillation, and more recently, thromboembolisms like PEs and DVTs in the case of rivaroxaban. Currently, there isn't really any good ways of measuring the activity of these drugs or of reversing them. So, in summary, the factors that are important for stopping coagulation progressing on too much are tissue factor pathway inhibitor, antithrombin, and proteins C and S.
the most important element for fibrinolysis, which is the breaking down of an established fibrin mesh in a clot, are tissue plasminogen activator and plasminogen, of which the active form is called plasmin. 